Okay, hello. Uh, my name is Rory and in this video tutorial I'm going to teach you how to make cassette tape loops. Um, but we're going to make some cassette tape loops with multiple splicings all in one. Um, so we're going to make three cassette loops. Um, one of them is going to be 17 centimeters long, one of them is going to be 22 centimeters long and one of them is going to be 24 centimeters long and the reason I'm doing that is because of what I'm limited to on the cassette tape so here's a, a 24 centimeter um, loop that I've made um, so basically the way it works is the 24 centimeter one goes around both of these reels here um, in order for the loop to go around. The 22 centimeter one actually only goes past this one and then down and um, the 17 centimeter one actually just goes along the bottom here just keeps on going around there so that's the shortest one um, so yeah we're going to make some of them um, so I've got up here um, a scene from School of Rock great film and uh, yeah basically I'm just going to record um, some of this scene. I'm going to record about two minutes on my cassette player and then two minutes on my micro cassette player um, and then we're going to take snippets from the recordings and turn them into cassette tape loops. So we'll see how this goes. So this cassette, um, so I'm starting at the very start of this cassette, this is side A. So Let's get started. So I'm going to record a minute on side A. So let's hit record and let's start. Okay, so that was about a minute on there. So on this spool here, that will have about a minute worth of tape on it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it over so that there's a, now a minute on this side. So um, it should record for about a minute before stopping automatically. Um, so we'll just do that now. So. I'm using a radio as my speaker, by the way, so I'm recording from the radio. Okay, so that's been a minute. So this cassette should, yeah, there we go, that's stopped. So now I've got a minute's worth of recording on both sides of the tape, on this side of the tape. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fast forward all the way to get to uh, the other side of the tape. So this may take a while. So whilst that's doing that, I'll put that off to the side for now. I'm going to use this micro cassette player and I'm going to record uh, another two minutes. And then once I've done that, I'm going to switch it to half speed um, just to sort of get a different texture of recording. So, um, so okay, let's go. Come here, dude. Jungle. 
played up here on the cymbal, but really light! So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this to half speed and record that so that when I uh, switch it back up it will be really high pitched. So let's go. No, it's called Rock Band. Okay, it's so now recorded um, in two different speeds of the micro cassette. So I'm still waiting for this to finish uh, fast forwarding. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect my micro cassette to the radio now so that playback will come from here. So I'll just find. I think it's time to start up. Found it. Okay, so now this is uh, fast forwarded all the way to the other side of the tape, and I've found the spot um, that's three minutes in on the recording um, on my micro cassette. So now I'm gonna play this micro cassette through the radio and record it onto here. So I need to flip this around first. So now it's on the B side again. Okay, so... Be enough. I'm going to flip this background. Okay, now I'm going to find. So that's got to the end now. So now we have recordings on both sides of the tape um, and on both sides of the reel. So now what we're going to do is so we're going to open this up. Um, so I've just got a screwdriver and undo the screws and this. I'm giving up trying to get that open because it's some of the bolts and the screws aren't coming undone. Right, get rid of this one. Okay, so we'll start off by making the 17 uh, centimeter cassette loop. So, well, well, we'll just we'll just cut them all off first. So. I actually need to do a bit of maths. Right, so you can see here, so my 17 centimetre one is going to be um, four lots of 4.5 centimetre um, bits of tape. For the 22 centimetre tape loop, I'm going to have one 11 centimetre uh, bit of tape 
and two 5.5 centimetre bits of tape. And for the 24 centimetre one, I'm going to have four lots of six centimetres of tape. So, that down there. So, I'm just going to randomly sort of choose bits of tape to use. So, let's get. Um, that bit and then so we'll start by getting a 4.5 centimeter one just about there 4.5 centimeters um we'll snip a bit off Centimeters, um, cut off a bit more, put it away, um, let's get rid of the wire seat. Okay, and then we'll, we'll make our 11 centimeter one now. Centimeters. Okay, so now what we're going to do is um, we're going to find our recordings that's on the inside of the spool bit there. So that's um, the first bits we recorded. So I'm going to take out this middle plastic bit. Um, okay. Um, where it's a bit tangled, I'll do that. Um, so we'll chop off about here maybe, chop it away, Okay, now we have all of our splices. We'll move this bit to the side. So let's start off with the. Don't blow them all away. Start off with the. Um, 17 centimeter tape loop. I've got these little bits of sellotape. So you want to grab a, a little splice, 
it's going to get some quite fiddly, so you can have steady hands. But you want a tiny bit of sellotape, quite a bit here. Literally the tiniest bit of sellotape. I don't know if you can see that, but a tiny amount. And then you want to get the bit of sellotape and you want to sellotape it on the inside of the tape. You see how the tape sort of curved like that? You want to put it on the inside. Like that. And then I'll grab another piece, doesn't matter which one. Um, and you want to stick that on the inside as well. So make sure you stick it on the inside. And try and make it as straight as possible. A little bit of overlap is fine. So now you have one splice. And another press, so you get another bit of tape. There we have it. So this is the seventeen centimeter tape loop. This is the shortest one we're gonna make. And I'll show you. So you don't need any of the spools for this. I'm literally just wrapping it around. Oh, sorry, wrapping it around this bit here. So this bit can be a bit of a challenge. A bit fiddly, as I say. But I like to use a little little screwdriver to help poke everything in place. There's little slots where the tape's supposed to go, you just want to slot it in there. Be patient with it. There we have it. So that's the first tape loop. See how it just goes around there. It's good for it to have a little bit of slack. But, uh, not too much, so it won't go round. So I'll put the cassette back together. Make sure there's no kinks in there. only actually need two screws to actually keep it in place. So I put one on the top left and the bottom right. Can't be bothered to put the rest in. No need. So we'll hear what this um, this 17 centimeter tape loop sounds like, um, and then we'll make the other ones. So because this is 17 centimeters and tape runs at about four and a half five centimeters a second this will be approximately four seconds long this tape loop so let's see what it sounds like
So you can hear there's a mixture of sped up recordings and uh, normal dialogue. Um, now hopefully, if I spin this round, there'll actually be another recording. So it's the same tape loop, but because um, I've recorded on both sides of the tape, I should be able to have two, two in one tape loops. That's cool. So before I make the other tape loops, I'm just going to quickly um, record this onto Logic so that I have it digitally. So I've got my little digital audio recorder here, and I'm just going to um, hit record basically. now make our 22 centimeter tape loop which I've made out of um, oh no sorry we'll make our 24 centimeter tape loop out of four lots of six centimeter bits of tape so the reason I've um, made sure it's in um, increments of four or that um, it, you know it divides by four is because um, afterwards, after I've recorded it, it means I can sort of add drums to it and stuff and use it as an actual um, sample because obviously, you know, most music's in 4 4. So um, it works best no matter how long your tape loop is if you um, sort of divided the bits into 4 or 2. Um, Unless you want some really weird time signatures, which maybe I'll do one day. Okay, so I'll get rid of this. I'll just put it to the side for now.
it right there. So there's the 24 centimeter tape loop. So for this one, I'm going to need both of these reels to keep the tape going in the right place. Okay, so this bit of tape is actually a bit too long, but it's okay because instead of having it going around just these two reels, I've actually had it going around this bit of plastic here so that it all fits in nicely and there's a nice amount of slack on there. So I don't need this one anymore. Okay, so here we have our 24 centimeter of um, cassette tape made out of four lots of six centimeter bits of tape all spliced together. So let's see what this sounds like. So we'll try side A first. And see what this sounds like. Bad. And we'll see what the other side, other side sounds like. Okay, so that's got a bit of the half half speed recording there. So like last time, I'll just uh, record that onto Logic. Cool. Yeah. So the reason I've chosen this uh, School of Rock, um, you know, this part of School of Rock, is because um, it has a nice mixture of uh, dialogue and music. So the tape loops will have a mixture of both, which I quite like the sound of. Okay, so now I've got both of them recorded. I'm just gonna finally make the 22 centimeter one. Okay, cool. I'll take the 24 centimeter tape loop out. And now we're gonna make the 22 centimeter tape loop out of um, so these two bits are five and a half centimeters and this bit's 11 centimeters so this is basically double the length Okay, so we have our 22 centimeter tape loop. So we're just gonna put this into the cassette. There we go. Okay, that's in there. Now let's give this final tape loop a listen. 
and see what it sounds like. So let's decide A first. Okay, so it sounds like that actually got um, the sound of me rewinding my uh, cassette player. So we'll listen to the other side and then we'll pull them onto the logic. Cool, so we'll record that. So this is side B. Okay, now the reason that was sort of changing sound the way through it was because this cassette's actually a bit too slack. You can see that there's a little bit sticking out. Um, there's not really much you can we can do about that. Um, actually, there might be something I can do. If I open it up. Well, it's not really neat. Let's screw that. So I'll just flip that around there. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, try and put these this bit of tape over the, these bit, bits of plastic here so that the tape loop's a bit, got a bit of a longer uh, route. And hopefully that will sort out the slack issue. Okay, so now there's a bit less slack because I've put it over these two bits of plastic. And the reason I can't get this screw off is because I've unscrewed it so many times now that it's just got worn out. Okay, now hopefully that should have gotten rid of. You can actually hear a lot more of the recording now. Okay, so let's record that. So that is side, what is it? Side A. Okay, now we'll listen to uh, side B. Hopefully we'll be able to hear more of the um, tape this time as well. Okay, that's the end of my video. I uh, hope you've enjoyed, hope you've learned a little bit about making cassette tape loops. Um, they're very fiddly but um, you can have a lot of fun with them, you get some cool sounds. Um, so yeah. Thank you very much.